Hi, this is Dr. Sue Cooper with a lecture video for Accounting 201 at Towson University. In this video, we're going to be looking at Chapter 3, Lecture Notes, page 12. Here at the end, I've got this um, extra add-on piece that I put in the notes to help give you more practice with adjusting journal entries. So what I want you to do is I want you to stop the video right now and I want you to do your very best to try out each of these. In the live class, I would have the students work on these together in groups of one or two two or three, I mean, and then they would come up on the board and they would write down the journal entry they think that would, the adjusting journal entry they think would be necessary based on the described scenario. This is an important exercise because when you force yourself to try, it helps your mind engage in the learning process. If you just watch me do everything, it will all look very easy because it is very easy for me. But then when you're asked to do it on your own in an exam or a quiz or a homework, it will become much more difficult because you haven't actually been engaging in the learning process when you're not trying it on your own. So what I want you to do is I want you to stop the video. I want you to try to make journal entries. You probably will not do them all correctly. And I would be surprised if you did. The goal is to make mistakes. Then turn the video back on and watch me do them and then fix your mistakes. Making a mistake and correcting it is actually a very good learning process. It's a great learning tool. It's psychologically healthy for you. And it's something that I would hope that you will be willing to try. Give it your best shot and then come back and check your work. So I'll give you a couple seconds to stop the video. Okay, so hopefully you stopped the video and wrote down journal entries in this uh, down here that you think go along with these scenarios. Now I'm gonna explain the answers. The first says an analysis of insurance policy shows that 2,400 of coverage has expired. So this, this suggests that there is a prepaid insurance out there that we have paid in advance. Insurance is almost always paid in advance and that we have used 2,400 of that insurance as of the date of this statement. So since we've used some of the insurance that we had paid for previously, we need to do an adjustment. We need to adjust that prepaid insurance uh, balance down by 2,400. So we need to show that the prepaid insurance has gone down by 2,400 because it's an asset and assets are decreased with credits then we would do the prepaid insurance as a credit. But we've also used the insurance. Using a resource almost always results in an expense. So the debit is going to be an expense. Insurance expense is the most likely option because it's an insurance policy. So uh, as usual, expenses are almost always debits. So when we use the insurance expense, we need to record it even if we already paid the cash in a prior period. So that's exactly what this adjustment does. It takes the uh, insurance that we paid in a prior period and we're going to expense it in this period. Okay, I'm going to actually delete this row so that we can just move up with each subsequent uh, scenario here. Okay. B, an inventory count shows that supplies costing 2,800 are available at the end of the period. Oh, this is not going to work. I go ahead and skip this one. I'm so sorry. This is not going to work because it didn't tell you how much there was at the beginning of the period. So go ahead and just cross that one out. If it had showed you how much was at the beginning of the period, we could figure out how much had been used at the end of the period. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let's change this. Supplies costing 2,800 are used, have been used. Let's do that. So when the adjusting journal entry has to be the amount that was used, not the amount that was left on hand. If you only know the amount left on hand, you also have to know how much you started with. So you can subtract to find out how much you used because the journal entry needs to be for how much you used. So we used 2,800. Oh, see, it says, it, apparently I left out some information that was important to that question. So I'm gonna change this a little bit. 
stuff like that. So we used 2,800 of supplies. And I, and again, if I changed it here. So instead of on hand, I changed it to have been used. So there's 2,800 that have been used. And uh, then our supplies are gonna go down 2,800. Um, and maybe these are referring back up here to this. Nope, it's not. Maybe this one? Nope, I must have pulled this from a different set of notes and it was referring to something else. All right, no problem, we got it here. Um, so 2,800 are used, so we need to record that amount that was used as a supplies expense. And then we record that the supplies, the asset called supplies is decreasing by 2,800. So whenever we use something that we've already paid for in the past, we have to record that it is being used. And uh, so the asset needs to be decreased by the amount that was used. The expenses are almost always debits. So whenever you're using something, you record that and then whatever the other account is, it becomes the credit automatically. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, depreciation on equipment is 13,200 and depreciation on the building is 7,200. Uh, depreciation is always done the same way with the same accounts, just different numbers. So let's look at the first one here. Uh, I made it into a three line journal entry actually. Um, and if you want, you can do it this way or you could do it in four lines that they both would be fine. So the important thing here is that we've got the depreciation expense. I did it with one entry that was those two added together, the 132 plus the 7,002 equals 20,400. But if you wanted to, you could actually do it like this. You could do 13,200 for the depreciation expense and then for the building. And then you could do another 7,200 for the depreciation expense on the building. Um, as long as the debits and the credits equal each other, then it's okay to have three lines in your journal entry instead of four. Um, if you just wanted to do depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation, um, for 20,400, that probably would be okay as well. But I know in your homework, I believe that it makes you specify which kind of accumulated depreciation you're recording. Either way, depreciation entries always include depreciation expense and then accumulated depreciation of some kind. Okay, let's then look at the next one. Earlier in the period, 12,500 cash was collected from customer A for services. At the end of the period, only 40% uh, percent of these services are complete. So we collected 12,500 in a prior period. It was at that time recorded as a deferred revenue. Um, and now we've completed 40% of it. So basically what that's telling us is that we've earned 12,500 times 40%. It's how much we've earned in this period. The accrual basis accounting system requires us to record revenue in the period in which it is earned. So we couldn't record it as revenue until this period because we hadn't earned any of it. So 40% of 12,500 is $5,000. So we need to record revenue of $5,000. Revenue is almost always a credit. So we're gonna record it as a credit. And I know you now are maybe are thinking this because back when we were doing these adjusting entries, all the expenses were credits and the revenue was a debit. That's because we were zeroing them out. When you're zeroing the counts out in the closing entries, that's when they switch to the other side. But all the rest of the time, they're, the revenues are almost always credits and the debits are, uh, are the expenses. Okay, so we got the services revenue. So now what we have to think is, okay, we're not getting cash now because we already got it in a prior period. So when we got it in the prior period, we would have recorded that as an unearned or a deferred revenue. So that's where we're gonna take it out of. 
So in a prior period, it was recorded as a deferred revenue, which is a liability. So uh, that increased it when we got the cash. Now we're going to decrease that deferred revenue by 5,000. There'll still be 7,500 of revenue in there that we still need to earn. But this month we earned 5,000 of it. So we're going to record that 5,000 revenue earned in that period. Okay, zero that out. I'm sorry, clear that and then delete this row. Next one, E, at the end of the period, um, $7,500 worth of services for customer B are complete but not collected. Okay, so this is saying that we did some work and we completed some services, but we aren't, we haven't collected the money yet. So this is an adjustment as well. We need to adjust our accounts to show that we earned the revenue of 7,500. It's a credit because revenues are almost always credits. So we need to record that. And then what do you do? What account do you use when they have, are gonna pay you later? Always accounts receivable. If they paid you in the past, we use deferred revenue. If they are going to pay us in the future, we use accounts receivable. So this is AR is the abbreviation for accounts receivable. And uh, then in the next period in the future, when they pay us the money, then we'll cancel that 7,500 out and it will show that they don't owe us that money anymore. Oops. Okay, F, employees are paid weekly. At the end of the period, two days salaries have accrued at the rate of 150 per day for each of 18 employees. All right, so what this is explaining is a situation where the month is ending in the middle of a week, but they're paid once a week. So let's, I'm gonna open up my calendar here. Um, see if I can find one where it has two days left at the end of the month. Ah, here's one. So June 2023. See how in the month before in May, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're in May. And then Thursday, Friday, we're in June. That's kind of the situation. Um, oh, wait, no, two days have been accrued. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me let me find a better one where that's only working for two days. Ah, here it is. Okay, this one. So this is uh, October, 2023 down here. And then the white numbers are November. So in October, they, the employees are gonna work for two days in October. And then the rest of the week is November, three days of November. So we have to make financial statements at the end of the month. So we have to make financial statements here. So that means we need to record the wages expense for Monday and Tuesday of that week in October. And then we have to record the wages expense for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in November. Since we don't pay them until the end of the week, these two need an adjusting entry for those two days to record a payable for wages for those two days at the end of October. And then we'll pay those two days off at the end of the week in November. So it says that there are two days salaries at 150 per day for 18 employees. So we need to do two days times 18 employees times $150 per day. So two times 18 times 150 is $5,400. That's how much wages expense we have incurred for those two days. So we need to do a wages expense. And this, I did a salaries expense. Oh, because it says salaries. Okay, so salaries expense there, and that's the debit, and then salaries payable. And this is for the end of the month. And then at the end of the week, the next, and three days later, during the next month, we'll pay that off and cancel that out. All right, next one. Uh, last one, actually. G. Uh, the balance. Oh, we can't do this one either. Balance in the prepaid rent account represents rent that was paid in previous period to cover the current period. Um, and so let's see what the journal entry is that I put in here. 3,000. So it looks like the balance was 3,000. Let's add that. 
the balance in the prepaid rent account, balance of $3,000 in the prepaid rent account represents rent that was paid in the previous period to cover the current period. Okay, there. So I added this to the notes. Um, so we've got this rent expense in the current period that we have to record because that's the period where we use the rent. And then we it was already paid for in a prior period. So when we paid for it in a prior period, we would have recorded it as a prepaid rent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to decrease this prepaid rent asset by 3000 and then we'll record the rent expense in the current period. If we were going to pay it later, then the prepaid rent would be accounts payable or rent payable. If we were gonna pay it right now, then this would be cash. So there's really just the three options. Either you pay it early, you pay it now, or you pay it later. If you paid it early, it was prepaid. If you pay it now, it's cash. If you paid it later, then it's a rent payable. Um, and that's how those adjusting entries work. It's just to show that the cash was either received or paid in a period that was different from when we recorded the expenses and the revenues. And again, remember with the accrual basis accounting, we have to record the expenses and the revenues in the period when they were earned and incurred, not in the period when the cash was received or paid. And that helps prevent fraud and to keep the financial statements more steady and predictable. All right, that's it for chapter three. There are uh, four homework assignments that you need to do for this chapter. And uh, please be sure to email me if you have any questions.